people, some it's day one, video number, who knows. Um, and so I'm running into Ola, Ola Strandberg, because he's got, you know, Strandberg guitars. And I picked this thing up and it's so light. And that's not just because it doesn't have a headstock. Because I have a headless guitar and it's much heavier than this. Yeah. So why is this so light? We constructed this from, from the bottom up, really, to be as, as light as possible. And, and obviously, having it headless makes it possible to make it lightweight and still balance well. Um, with, with regular tuners, the neck will want to drive, dive to the floor. So it starts with just super light swamp ash, and we chamber it as well. Ah, chamber it. Because I have a, a mayonnaise a Hydra, which is uh, you know, headless. But that's mahogany, and it's it's not really a lot lighter than a standard guitar. Mm -hmm. It's very compact, yeah. um, but this weight-wise is ridiculous. The chambering is probably the answer. Chambering right? is part of it, but then also uh, we make our own hardware from aircraft-grade aluminium. Okay, so I was just going to say. Traditional material yeah. choices are like brass, steel, or cast zinc. Uh, so this also contributes a lot to uh, weight savings. And we still picked up our only three pickup guitars, so it's one of the heavier <laughs> ones. And there's a, I mean, there's a little bit of a contour. That's probably the smallest contour I've ever seen. It's more like an alibi contour. Look at this, come on. It's like, yeah, we all Fair guitars enough. have a contour, come on. You know? <laughs> I mean, here's a real one, okay? Yeah. I mean, but these the, are... The, the body is also a little bit it's smaller, so if, if this had continued to where a normal yeah. perimeter would be, it's... I mean, these are clearly weight-wise, shape-wise, and everything-wise, the most ergonomic guitars. And you probably have talked a million times about the neck, so I'm gonna spare you that. Fair enough. <laughs> they have this thing where the neck isn't like other necks, where if you play in a perfect, how you should, thumb in the middle, It'll, it'll guide you to where you need to be. So when you're in the first fret, you're higher up. Can you see that, Dave? Higher up with the thumb. And then when, when you actually go up, your position shifts a bit. So this, to the blues player, will feel uncommon and maybe not even good to the technical player who has the correct position for the thumb. Um, this is exactly how it's supposed to be. So that's just a, something you said will do and no compromise, these are modern guitars. And I actually would say, without blowing smoke up your ass, that these are the most modern guitars. Innovative is another word, but I mean, you clearly say, I do my way, this is, this is what I do, and these are probably not for the traditional blues player. Uh, not that you couldn't play that on it, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. but aesthetically and also fret hand-wise, all that, they might not be like, oh yeah, this is amazing. It'll take some coming around too, but a lot of people are becoming, at least my age, I'm not gonna guess yours, but old, <laughs> it's, it, old it, as fuck. It makes a difference to not carry all that weight on your shoulder. And we, we keep hearing from people that, oh, I can finally play without pain. And oh, I had carpal tunnel, now, yeah. now I can put, I'm back to playing. So we're, we're actually finding that, that we, this design makes a difference um, I, from the ergonomics perspective. I see a, um, it's not just a gimmick. A, 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 a Trace editor. I see him play these in, in videos all the time. Yes. And he's a phenomenal guitar player. Mm. I think you're a phenomenal guitar player. Um, and I get jealous at his skills, but also like just his, the ease. I mean, it, everything looks light. Everything looks effortless. Yeah. And and that's how I probably would describe these. I just yeah. a great tool because it, things are effortless. Yeah, um, yeah I want to say that the, the reduced mass and stiff and light materials make it there's less less mass to set in motion, if you will. Mm -hmm. So that there's more dynamics and, and they're more touch sensitive. So there is something to be said about the mojo. Mm -hmm. If you know no offense to you, but this is not very rock and roll. <laughs> this is very technical metal. Yeah. And if you grab a Friedman that's all beat up and whatever it looks like, an old, there is something to be said about the psychology of playing guitar. Yeah, and when sure. you pick up an instrument, the way that it feels, looks, the way that it makes you feel has a lot to do with what you play on it. On a telly, you might not metal simply because it's a telly. Maybe it's an, an amazing guitar for that, but your mindset wraps itself around what do you do on a telly based on the history. Now, that will probably eliminate this from a lot of people's wish list because it, there isn't a history, there isn't a this is what you play on a Strandberg, except for 
more modern yeah. technical things. Yeah. Because that's th those are the players that you see. Again, not saying that they can't sound like that, but this isn't aged, this isn't a strat. So you're not gonna go Steve Ray Vaughan on it, yeah. which is probably kind of sad. Yeah. Well, I, I agree 100% uh, about how important it is the way it makes you feel, and not just from playing it, but from looking at yourself in yeah. the mirror, and and perhaps looking at like your big hero, um, and that's something that we constantly set out to do to make a guitar that will solve ergonomic problems, but still be desirable. Uh, as as a strand book, I think this is very desirable. As me wanting to feel like Slash, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, obviously, okay. So let's look at a couple yeah. of models here. Sure. Uh, I know you have different lines. You've got the more expensive range, and then you have the less expensive range, which are still around how much? They started about 1550 euros, okay. which is the, the Bowden Classic, which is this here. Okay, and where are they made? Uh, our guitars are all made in Indonesia. Okay, so the lower and the higher range all in Indonesia. Yes, we, we used to have a, a custom shop mm -hmm. in Sweden, but we uh, actually stopped taking orders last year um, simply because we, it was too overwhelming. We, we want to do a good job with production guitars. With the right oversight and everything and, and enough quality control, you can get great guitars out of Indonesia. Absolutely. Yeah, and we, we do focus on it. We, we put a lot of resources into uh, ensuring that and, and growing with care. Right now, and, and make sure that we grow with. Uh, uh, it might the be. It might. Use. People have preconceptions. A China guitar is this much. An Indonesian guitar is this, this much. A Korean guitar can start here. A custom shop guitar can start here. So, you probably have some trouble convincing people. Oh, Indonesian guitar for this much money, because there's simply again preconceptions of. This is what I'm willing to pay for guitar with that origin. Which literally says nothing about the factory, the quality, the woods, the materials. It's just that origin is how much I pay for it, which is yeah, also kind of sad. Yeah, yeah, but they still come around eventually because the, the, the skill sets are constantly moving around in, in the world, and it's really the attitude of the um, factory and of exactly. the owners of the factory that matters. And when when they put their minds to it, they'll do the best in the world. When we say and, Indonesia, and it doesn't mean one company in Asia. It means there's many brand, uh, companies and, and factories in Indonesia, so literally that means nothing. It's like, this, it's a German-made guitar. Well, that can be a very shitty guitar, that can be a Nick Huber, it can be a ridiculous guitar. So the origin really says very little unless you know more specifics. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, and we use the, the Peter Court factory, which, which is, um, it's, I want to say, they do amazing work. Yeah. And, and they have the exact mindset that we need. Uh, continuous improvement, really want to do the best product in the world and uh, we spend a lot of time working together with them so it's, it's a continuous dialogue and uh, we, we couldn't be happier really. Is this roasted maple? It is, yeah. Um, I love how everything on this is literally designed for the instrument, <laughs> the, the, the jack, the, uh, the trim, everything, you don't have a, a plate on here because you know why, everything is yours. So, very cool. So, at the same time, we, we do make sure that it's not like rocket science or you need specialty parts. There are obviously parts that only we can provide, but any guitar tech can repair and set up and maintain a guitar mm -hmm. like this. So, that there's nothing unique about it in, in that way. So, that's the fun thing. That's where it starts. What's the most expensive instrument at the booth? Um, that would be our basis, I think. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's a beautiful blue. Yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice. I'm a That's sucker for Bowden guitars. Classic, which is along the or Bowden Standard, which is also the, our slightly more affordable. Oh, really? Uh, from from the 1600 euro. Nice. <laughs> but so, if memory serves us, our bases are 3300 euros around there. I remember Gregor from Base the World has a great review on these, and he freaking yeah. loved them. Yes. Yeah, yes. He, he, he was nuts about them. Yeah, Trouble yeah. Is. And they... Whoa, this is light. They do everything our guitars do. They're very lightweight, they're, they're shaped so you can rest them in different positions in, in, in your lap. And you have Nordstrand pickups. That too. I, uh, I was in, uh, in his workshop when he just built bases and didn't even have pickups. Yeah. Um, 
here. Kerry is great. He's, he's 20 minutes from our U.S. office. Oh, okay. So we, we could really work Kerry, together. Kerry uh, and I, we spent weeks in my studio when I lived in L.A. Uh, he helped me mix one of my albums. We're, we're old good friends. And I'm so happy that I see his pickups everywhere around the world and that that's working for me. He just opened a restaurant. Yes, I know. Why? <laughs> he's made me pizza, so I know what he's capable of and I can't wait to actually visit. <laughs> this is absolutely beautiful. This also has the dark glass tone capsule in it. Well, this is our prog base. Well, dark glass knows how to make things growl. Yes, and original base, which is here, has a uh, North Strand. Okay, uh, or so this is as high end as it gets. Yes. And super, super light. Well, I'm gonna uh, let you go. Actually, I'm gonna leave you here and we go. <laughs> um, thanks, Dave. It always looks like you're pointing somewhere else, but I know that uh, my camera is a wide angle. I'm gonna have to drag Robin in here because this poor, poor man runs around in the worst garment ever created by humankind. <laughs> created by You do know that people will stare at you continuously. Yeah. Hey, Robin. <laughs> you are very messed up in the head. Now go away again. <laughs> Wow. I have it in the hotel room and I don't dare to wear it, okay? <laughs> I don't have those balls. <laughs> yeah, see, I wear that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, thanks, Ola. Thanks, great, a lot, great work. Good to see you again. And um, what, do we, what do we say at the end? What was it again, Dave? Animals at the end. <laughs> that one. After Steven got out.